Great, thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, fantastic to have this first webinar with um, you, and I think it's meaningful that we have this first webinar with Closer, who is um, uh, our partner in crime for this um, this project. So, um, I am Louise Arcelot, and I will kind of first um, start by giving you a bit of background about the project. And I will go through my slides quite quickly because we think that the most important part of this webinar will be with Bridget, who will show you the catalog and she will um, tell you a little bit more about how to use the catalog itself. So I think that it's quite um, clear that there is an increase in the interest and concerns about um, mental health and mental, mental health and well-being um, in the UK, and this has been highlighted um, most recently with the pandemic and the impact on um, COVID on uh, the population's mental health um, and well-being. Um, we believe that the cohort and longitudinal studies um, have a key role to play in, in trying to provide answers to very important questions related to the causes and the consequences of um, risk factors related to um, mental health problems. Um, these longitudinal and cohort studies are huge investments for the research councils and other funders as well. And there are questions as to whether these have been properly used, you know, to um, to you know closely to um, you know the investment that I have have been made. So. What we did uh, was to create um, some kind of a platform which would provide information about mental health measures that would um, already be collected um, as part of those um, beautiful cohorts. Um, and it, this is in the interest of maximizing the uptake of those mental health measures and, and well-being measures as well, included in those um, in those beautiful kind of cohort studies. The other um, aim of the project is really to encourage um, the use of mental health measures in the UK, and especially to encourage people from other disciplines, other than psychology and psychiatry, but encourage social sciences, for example, into using mental health as part of their research. Um, and also to kind of include social sciences as part of mental health research. So we would want to have an increase of mental health in so social sciences, and we want to have more social science in mental health research at the moment. And finally, the, the project really aimed to promote projects on harmonization and work across um, cohorts. So at this point, I just um, I would like to acknowledge, of course, Closer for um, funding this um, this project a few years ago. And I need to mention that this um, project or these ideas have been developed in the context of my fellowship with the ESRC. And that will provide you a bit of context as to why we're focusing only on measures of mental health and well-being, because I am the mental health leadership fellow. Um, so this this catalog is really focused on mental health and well-being in the context of this um, fellowship. And here I would want to acknowledge the contribution of my wonderful collaborators. So Bridget, who you will uh, meet in a few um, in a few minutes, who really is the person who kind of developed this catalog uh, and who has been working um, with me for nearly two years, if not more. And then you have Professor Barbara Mon. Here, who is the, our national treasures? So she is a data dictionary on two on two feet. So uh, we really kind of harness uh, Barbara's experience and knowledge about um, those beautiful cohort that we have. And the project started with the contribution of um, Rukman Semi, who kind of have has left now. Um, but I think it's really important to acknowledge her contribution from the very beginning. And this picture is our kind of web designer. Um, so John Rogers, who's working with um, Delosis, so he is Delosis, and he's the one who made uh, all our ideas and our work kind of um, possible, you know, in this uh, platform. 
So let me tell you a little bit more about the process uh, that we went through, you know, to create this catalog. And the first thing that we had to um, decide as a team was um, which cohort are we going to include in our um, in our study? And we decided to kind of focus. Originally, we were funded for one year, so we knew that we had important limit time limit. So we needed to make the project man manageable. And we decided to um, include um, cohorts that had multiple waves of data collection that contain, of course, mental health and well-being measures that at least had 200 participants at um, the first sweep of data collection. We wanted to have data that were collected in the context of British context. So we do have mostly UK cohort and longitudinal studies, but we also have international studies that have, you know, an important uh, British context. And the study had to be ongoing, and that's a, a bit of a loose criteria because funding is so um, uncertain and we never know from one time to the next. Um, but we at least need to know that there's an intention of um, getting more funding to continue the, the study. So in total, we managed to identify 46 studies that could be eligible to be included in, in the catalog. And having said that, uh, the criteria that we've used at the beginning, um, this was very helpful to kick off the project. But now that we have um, a catalog or a platform which is um, working well, we are considering other criteria um, to be able to include further kind of um, studies uh, our project. So here, this is just a, um, a snapshot to let you know about all the cohorts that are uh, included in the in the catalog, and I will not go through them um, one by one, but I'm sure that you will identify all the closer cohorts are, of course, uh, included in um, in the catalog. You will see that there's a, um, a quite nice representation of aging cohorts which is very, very good. We have also a few studies which are twin studies, um, which is an in interesting feature um, of some of the cohort and for those people who want to control for um, genetic co confound. Um, <clears throat> so this is just a snapshot of all the cohorts that have been included um, in there. We are also kind of um, developing something with uh, occupational cohort. So um, that is something that we're developing at the moment, um, which would be um, good. And then we had to ask ourselves, OK, so what are the mental health topics that we want to include? So uh, we want to include uh, and topics is um, what kind of mental health and well-being measures that we want to include. So we want to include indicators of mental health problems, impairment or difficulties that result resulting uh, from mental health problems, of course. We include uh, treatment, service use and uh, help seeking. And of course, we include measures of psychological well-being. Unfortunately, we cannot include cognitive measures, measures of personality or temperament, or also risk factors for mental health problems. So, for example, we can include bullying as a measure or an indicator of antisocial behavior, but we don't include bullying victimization as part of the measures um, in the catalog. So this is a list of all the um, indicators or the topics of mental health and well-being measures that we focused on. Um, and this is the list. And again, we are considering um, including more of those uh, indicators in the near future, but this was a, a good starting point. So just to tell you a little bit more about step by step, um, what we did or more precisely what Bridget did. Um, so once we identify um, a cohort study, then we look up online or we check kind of key papers, uh, information that is available to us to be able to determine all the measures of mental health and well-being that it has been collected by that, that study. We collect the information, we summarize the information, and then we organize um, all the information, um, including items and also the informants. And then once Bridget has done that, she brings it into the team and then we review the summary, uh, we answer questions, we ask questions, we check, we double check. And then once this is ready, we contact the study team and we ask them to check Bridget's review so that it is complete and it is accurate.
And once this is done, when we have the green light from the study team, then we upload that new uh, cohort study into the catalog. And this is a point for me to kind of say that the response from all the cohort studies has been tremendously supportive. So any, everyone kind of agreed to share with, with us information when we couldn't find it. And all the studies accepted to spend time reviewing um, the information that we've collected. So um, this is just to show the um, a testimony really of the willingness of the cohort study to work with us because, you know, they, they didn't necessarily have to kind of do that, but everyone accepted, so it's great. So, so far, we reviewed 92% of the identified studies, and that includes 3,000 mental health measures that identify from more than 300 waves of data collection. So, one conclusion from the work that we've done so far is that there's lots and lots of information out there about mental health and well-being. Um, it is important to mention that 85% of the studies are on the catalog. Um, so it's, you know, some of them are still being reviewed by, um, by the study teams. So far, we noticed that depression, anxiety, psychological distress, well-being, and alcohol substance use and, uh, and substance use are most often uh, measured. So there's wealth of information out there on those um, topics. So the catalog, what it does in a nutshell, it is a search engine for mental health and well-being measures already collected as part of UK cohorts and longitudinal studies. It does present detailed information about those measures, including item, the response scales, the informants, and the reporting period as well. It does highlight the statistical properties of standard measures of well-being and mental health. So we do provide when there's um, statistical or psychometric properties of those measures of the instruments that were used, we do provide that. It also point out to, to um, data access policies for each of the study included in the catalog. And finally, it does signpost resources for conducting longitudinal um, research on mental health. And we do include kind of um, courses, uh, which was the main feature of the catalog at first. But the good thing is that we did include online training, which has suddenly become um, the most kind of uh, valuable way of getting statistical training these days. What the catalog doesn't do it doesn't provide access to the data. So we don't hold the data ourselves. We don't provide access to that. It doesn't include either an appraisal of the measure suitability for a particular project. So we're not saying to you, this is the best measure or you should use this measure. So the researchers who are using the catalog, they have to do a bit of homework as well to find out what is the best measure for them to use for their own project or the best measure to answer the questions that they have. Um, as I said before, the catalog does not address cognition, neurocognitive disorders, learning difficulties or learning difficulties, disabilities, sorry. Uh, it doesn't include personality or temperament measure or risk factors. And also, it doesn't cover trial or experimental research. It's really focusing on longitudinal and cohort study. And finally, it doesn't provide research training. So people really do have to acquire the skills and the knowledge to be able to conduct the statistical um, analyses. Um, we all just want to mention briefly that the catalog um, had to adapt given COVID-19. So, 52% um, of the studies part of the catalog are collecting new data during the pandemic and ask questions related to the impact of the pandemic on mental health and, and well-being. So we provide, um, as part of the catalog now, we provide detailed information about 50 new data collection events across 21 um, cohort. And at the moment, we report mental health measures, um, the number of participants who are the informant, um, and the data collection method, and also information about the data ac uh, access po policies. And we'll add more information as the data um, is being collected. This is um, 
the main page of the uh, of the catalog. So you can see that there's definitely a green kind of theme and probably you can see as well that it is represented, you know, in my office uh, at the moment. So um, this is our um, our brand, I would think, um, which is yeah, quite interesting. Um, and it is 21 um, past. So I will pass on to you to um, Bridget. We will not take questions right now. You will have plenty of time or an opportunity to ask questions um, because the next session will be very with Bridget will be very um, interactive. But I will pass on to uh, Bridget now. OK, hey, great. Thank you, Louise. So um, like Louise said, I'm about to kind of run um, you all through kind of an overview of the catalog and how to use it. So as you can see on your screen, um, I'll start off on the home page of the catalog. And this is, I mean, like any home page, a bit of a guide to, um, you know, what we have available on the catalog. Um, but I think I might start with just some of the background pages that we provide um, or background information, I should say, that we provide. So in these kinds of tabs up here, we have kind of background information on the project, and this covers a lot of the information that um, Louise just discussed. Um, and so we have information about how we gathered the information and how to use the catalogue so that users can kind of have a good understanding of where kind of this all comes from. Um, and then in this tab, we have kind of some more background information that tries to particularly, I think, support um, researchers from outside the kind of traditional mental health research disciplines um, or people who aren't so familiar with using longitudinal data. So um, we have this page which um, provides background information on longitudinal research, what it is and how important it is. And we have this beautiful video, of course, from Closer featured as well. Um, and we include also some information about what types of longitudinal studies we include on the catalogue here and link to the Closer Learning Hub as well um, for people to kind of get started on using longitudinal data. We also have um, this page here. I think Louise mentioned that we provide a bit of background information on the psychometric properties of some of the standardised measures that we used in the catalogue. Um, or that we use by the studies and are featured in the catalog, I should probably say. And so here we try and provide like a little bit of overview information about a measure, about the number of items, what it um, intends to measure, um, and maybe some clues about things that users should think about before using this measure, and then some references so that they can really get going on their own research. Um, about a measure. So on this page right now, we don't intend to kind of say what measures are good or that we recommend, but kind of to give people a good starting point to um, kind of start their own journey of um, deciding what um, measure is the best for their research. Um, and so we have um, as well kind of pages featuring different harmonization projects, because I think that's something we really want to encourage on the catalog. Um, and also a page with statistical training as well, where um, you can see the online resources um, at the top here. And I think we are planning on um, updating this with all of the great new um, online training that's available now that that is how we receive training. Um, but so that's all kind of background support information. But I think the main feature of the catalog is the search feature. Um, and so this is where we kind of have our list of all of the studies that are on the catalog. Now I'm sure you'll see studies that you recognize here. Um, and so what users can do is just browse through this list. Um, and if something piques their interest, they can follow that. But what they can also do is search for a study that suits their um, needs. So you can search for the name of the study. If you know what you're interested in, you can search for um, a mental health topic you're interested in or a specific instrument. So I normally think about something that I might be interested in researching as an example. So I might say that I'm interested in how different uh, young people from different ethnic backgrounds um, are experiencing anxiety um, before and maybe during the pandemic. So I think 
if that were the case, the first thing I would search for is anxiety. And what we could see here is all the studies that um, cover anxiety. You can see here that the catalog um, has a suspicion that I might also be interested in emotional problems in childhood or in psychological distress. But if that's not the case, I can just click undo and it will just search for the term that I've put in the search box here. And so what I want to know as well is because clearly there's 36 studies that match my search term for anxiety. So I might want to narrow that down a bit. So what I am firstly going to filter for are the themes. So we have at the top here COVID and when we use this uh, filter, it will only include studies that are collecting data during the pandemic. Um, so I'll definitely turn that one on and then I can kind of browse through these other themes here um, and kind of see if any kind of pique my interest. Um, so we have like a whole range here. So ageing studies or studies that are good for cross-national comparison. But I think I want to be able to think about how um, uh, young people from ethnically diverse backgrounds have experienced the pandemic. So I'm going to um, filter for ethnicity and race so I know that all the studies that are on the list are useful for studying that topic. Um, and then I'm going to close this because that's quite a long list. And then I think I'm interested in young people. So I'm going to filter on the age of recruitment and say that I want the participants to maybe be recruited before they were 20. 20. Um, but I want them to still, you know, I want them to be young people right now. So maybe I'll be generous and say maybe they were born after 19, or sorry, the start date of the study was after 1990, but maybe before 2010. So we have at least kind of 10 years of um, follow up available. So then I can see that there's only three studies left. I'm going to get rid of that. And so I've got MCS, Understanding Society, and Born in Bradford. So I might think, okay, I recognize MCS, so I'll follow that. And so then we find ourselves on a study page. So at the top of the page, we include overview information to, information to give people kind of a background on a study. So we can find out a bit about the aims, where the study is based, and kind of the geographic coverage. Um, and when the study started, we also include some overview information about the sample. So the type of sample, because we do have um, repeated cross-sectional studies or um, occupational cohort studies, but I can see that this is a birth cohort. Um, and then a bit of information about the how the sample was recruited, the sample size and at the most recent sweep, although I have seen that there is a new sweep of MCS that has just become available, um, which we will add to the catalogue. And then we provide here a little bit of information about accessing the data. So like Louise said, we don't provide access to data, but we do provide a little bit of information about where users can go to um, access that. So you can see here the data is available on the UK data service. We've got a little tick to say, okay, genetic data was collected and it's also linked to um, some administrative data as well, which is good to know. We can also go to the website and have some overview paper, uh, reference papers as well to kind of get users started. But what I'm interested in is what anxiety measures were collected in this study. So. We come down to the bottom of the page and we have the mental health measures timeline. And this is where we provide the really detailed information about all of the mental health and wellbeing measures collected in the study. So what I can do is browse along this timeline and see the different data collection points that have taken place. So we can see age three, age five, age seven, 11 and 14. So what I could do is kind of browse through these measures and see all of the amazing measures that were collected and say one piques my interest. I see mm, uh, alcohol use. They use the audit. I can um, hover over this eye that's available and see some overview information. Um, and I can kind of see the, over, I guess, what the measure was trying to measure in this case. So we have obviously the topic and the name of the scale, but we also have the focus. So that is who the measure was about. So here it's measuring alcohol use in the child's carer and the carer's partner. 
and that it was self-report. So now I'm seeing that it's main care and partner. Maybe I'm not so interested, but I am interested in the cohort member. So I can come down to this one and say, I'm interested in this and click on there and see some more detailed information. And so we can see the reporting term, we can see the questions that we used and the response scale. And if there's any kind of notes about the measure, how it was delivered or how it should be used, we can also include that information here too. But actually I'm more interested in anxiety. So I'm gonna type that in here and where these beautiful little trees grow um, shows us that there is measures of anxiety in those sweeps. So I can see even from nine months, there's measures of anxiety in the main carer of the child. And I can browse through and see the different measures that we use. So I might be interested in the K6 um, and I see it's ticked as a standard instrument, which is what I'm interested in. Get some more detailed information there. And so say I am interested in the K6 I, and I think maybe what other studies might have used it. I can go back to the search page and I can also search for the name of a measure. So I know that this is called the Kessler Psychological Distress Scale. So I can kind of see here um, what studies have used that measure as well, which I think might be particularly useful who are, for users who are trying to um, do cross cohort research or some kind of harmonization research as well. Um, but I am sure some of you notice that down here, we do only have information up to age 14. And in this scenario, I am interested in um, their experiences of participants during the pandemic. We've been doing, because so many studies are doing great work during the pandemic, we thought we would start off by providing overview information. And now um, that we've kind of done that, we're working on adding that detail to the catalog pages. But for now we have our COVID um, timeline and this provides, um, yes, yeah, slightly less detail about the um, measures themselves, but I think is really useful for seeing kind of what has been happening um, during the pandemic in terms of the um, co UK cohorts. So what we can do here is Rather than covering just one study, we can see all of the studies that have been collecting data during a particular month since April. So again, we can kind of browse through what's been happening each month up until um, sweeps planned for spring next year. Um, and say I was, I do know I'm interested in MCS, I can search for MCS and see that they have planned to collect data in May and August and then here when I ask for more detail I can see the standard measures that will be used, what participants are included, the way data is going to be collected and a little bit of information about data access um, and then of course links to more detail but of course we can also search for or browse along the timeline and see the wealth of information that's being collected during the pandemic. So I hope that was a useful overview for everyone and kind of gave you kind of a starting point for how to use the catalog. We, you will see our contact details at the end. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions or contact us um, separately after this, um, after this um, webinar. Uh, if you have any kind of um, questions um, or suggestions, of course. Um, should I should I go for the next step, Bridget? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, so just to let you know, uh, I think that we mentioned that this is really very much a, a work in progress, and I think that our plans have been. Um, messed up by COVID. Um, so this is not something that we've originally planned, um, but we had to um, to make space, we think, for that because it was definitely something important that we couldn't um, uh, not address as part of the catalogue. Um, and just to mention as well that the catalogue does not include, um, for the COVID section, it doesn't include new cohort studies that were set up for COVID. So we really only focus on existing cohort studies that decided to 
add new data collection waves for um, addressing important questions related to the impact of COVID on mental health and, and well-being. Um, so as we kind of mentioned, not all the cohort studies are yet in the catalogue. So and the biggest one, you know, is our next um, step is to include ASPAC, but there are also other ones. And we're going to have an update um, fairly, fairly soon. Three studies that have been, you know, are completed now that will go in the catalogue, but we need to review a few more um, studies and add that to to the catalog that is definitely one thing that we want to do next and the other thing that we want to do next as bridget mentioned is really to provide more information about the data collection of the covid um studies um as part of the <clears throat> of the cohort and longitudinal studies so we want to do that um but most importantly as want to add new resources to support researchers to use data and, and measures um, effectively. So our kind of training section um, could be developed, you know, much more. So we want to um, add new kind of resources, training um, on how to use the data uh, adequately. Um, so we are going to work uh, on this probably in the winter. Uh, another point that was brought up by um, some people when we talk about the, the catalog is, you know, why is it focused only in the UK? There could be value to include international cohorts, and we absolutely can see that. So there is um, scope for including not necessarily um, lots of different cohorts, but at least, you know, very well known um, cohort study that made a, you know, significant contribution to our understanding of mental health and well-being. And that could be kind of um, interesting comparison to see, you know, what are they using in terms of measures, you know, in the US, for example, or in developing countries, um, you know, in Africa, maybe in Brazil. So um, there is, um, you know, plan to kind of include a selected um, or a selection of international cohort as part of um, the catalog. Um, and then there could be um, scope into um, kind of going back to our topics of mental health and well-being and, and um, just kind of go back through um, our criteria and determine, well, have we been too narrow in the measures that we've included, in the topics that we've included? Um, we don't want to miss out, you know, um, on well-being measures especially. So when you look at the list of the topics, it's quite focused on mental health problems or um, mental health, um, mental illness. Um, so uh, we want to go back and making sure that we do capture um, good measures of well-being um, as well. Um, and there's also maybe the idea of developing a parallel um, catalog like this, but more for social risk factors, social indicators. Um, I think that one of the good thing that the catalog does is to um, provide information quickly. Um, so we don't want to make the catalog a huge engine that would be clunky and that would take a lot of time to provide you with the answer. So adding a, a you know, an element of social risk factors could be um, too much. So but maybe developing another um, engine catalog for um, social indicators could be interesting if those two kind of um, speak to each other. That could be um, something interesting. So that would be the next step for the for the catalog. And hopefully at some point it will be only a matter of keeping it up to date. I think at this point we still feel that this is very much something, you know, that we are developing um, and it's really good to hear from you, you know, how you can see it develop nicely and telling us about what you need and what you would want to see as part of the of the catalog. Um, so yes, so here you can see our email address. We are also um, on Twitter and you have again either the QR or the um, um, the website to access um, the catalog. Um, so there's still time for some questions. Um, and Bridget and I will stay online. Um, so it's 5-2 now, 5-2-2. Um, two, two. Um, so we will still kind of take some questions and we'll, we'll stay online for a little bit longer, just if you feel that you want to have more a one-to-one -one chat, then you, you could do that. Um, 
but maybe this would be a good time to um, say thank you. But if you do have questions, please do ask them.